Hey everybody, this is Trevor, and you're watching my channel, Social Dilemma. And today in the uh, Leaving Canada series, I want to talk politics. The politics of Canada. And it's a huge reason why I would, would like to leave Canada. And there are other Canadians, they're just, you know, they're coming to a revelation and they're seeing the exact same things. And it's not like I've just magically seen these things over the last few months but you know i've seen them over my, my adult life here and uh really so let me explain the politics of canada so for the past six decades canada has been socialism okay uh you know i guess you could call it that democratic socialism you know where i guess they just put makeup on a pig and make it look pretty so basically i mean obviously everyone you know you know about canada you, everyone says oh it's got free health care well no uh i explained in a previous video on health care in canada uh, i'll give a little general synopsis again of it uh it's socialism and if you make a hundred thousand dollars in canada you're paying between 25 and twenty eight thousand dollars in taxes towards a healthcare system whether you like that or not whether you want to pay that amount or not you have there's no choice the government takes that from you okay so there's you know that's a huge form of socialism and well government in general really is socialism because the more and more they take over and do that uh people could do on their own um just it is socialism it's it's so education in Canada it's completely socialized uh, there's no real freedom of choice when it comes to education uh, well that's the thing with any government program there's no freedom of choice to uh, do that so so yeah so what's the percentage of money taken away to pay for government education I don't know Probably 10,000 10, out of every 100,000 you make goes to that. Um, and, and, and basically in Canada, well, for the past six decades, 60 years or so, um, it's been dominated by uh, federal politics. So basically provinces, like if you're an American watching this, just know that, or if you're Canadian watching this, I mean, let me open your eyes, I mean, Provinces basically have not much power. There's no say. You know, when the federal government says jump, the provinces say how high. Maybe a few of them are reluctant to do that. Uh, I know Quebec, you know, wants to toot their own horn and, and Alberta, and they say they're, you know, they're kind of running their own show, which they really aren't. They really aren't. Uh, you know... Uh, which was true during the pandemic. The, uh, Justin Trudeau said, this is what we're doing for the uh, Cerveza sickness. And they're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And Quebec even went 10 steps, 10 feet higher when they jumped up for that. Um, so yeah, the politics of Canada, it's socialism. And this is where I, I really, <coughs> you know, um, I'm 50, so I used to, in my younger days, I voted conservative, thinking, well, we got to hold this socialism back. It's, you know, it's no good. And I would vote conservative because conservatives are always for, you know, hey, we're for low taxes and we're here to support the small and medium business owners and we'll get those mega corporations out of here or, you know, keep them... At, you know, keep them in line. You know, they, they do all that, that stuff where they say they're for business and low taxes and, you know, uh, you know, freedom for individuals and whatnot, which, which is strange that they, they never are. They never are. And let me give you examples. And if any Canadian wants to challenge me on these three conservative leaders that I know of in my lifetime. Now, one of them really doesn't count. Kim Campbell was only prime minister of Canada for three, four months. But Brian Mulroney and Stephen Harper, what did they do that was so conservative that would have kept someone like myself and other conservative-minded people in, you know, in, you know, voting conservative? Now I haven't voted this century. 
Okay, I've gone beyond liberal and conservative politics because you start to see that conservatives in Canada are not much better than liberals. Okay, what the conservatives in Canada do, they come into power. So someone like Brian Mulroney, um, who worked with, you know, there was that, uh, you, know, you know, he works with mega corporations. I don't recall Brian Mulroney ever, uh, you know, coming out for lower taxes. In fact, he brought in the GST uh, January 91 or 93, uh, early 90s. I can't remember which year, but it was January. So he brought in taxes and brought a brand new system of taxation in Canada called the GST. And that was brought to you by the Conservative Prime Minister of Canada, Brian Mulroney. What did he do? What did Brian Mulroney do for firearms owners? And I bring this up all the time and they'll... People will tell me, oh, you know, they got rid of the liberal, the laws that the, the liberals brought in, uh, you know, Pierre Trudeau and whoever, you know, yeah. oh, okay, okay, maybe they do that. Same with Stephen Harper, got rid of the long arm registry, which really isn't gone. If you, if you follow firearms uh, lawyers in Canada, uh, just, you know, Ian Runkle of the Bailey, he'll explain that one um, for you, but. You know, they get rid of them, but there's really not gone. Um, and did they go any further, though? Did they go any... Did, did Stephen Harper come out and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm getting rid of this uh, two license systems thing, and we're going to have one license, and, you know... Did he push for anything that was close to two? No. Did Brian Mulroney come out for... Any, you know, do these... Do the conservative people in Canada ever low... I mean, drastically lower taxes and to help... The economy, the small and medium businesses, which are supposed to be the backbone of a nation. No, they don't. They basically, what they do is it looks good in Canada every once in a while to vote in a conservative prime minister. Because it looks like, you know, we're <coughs> keeping, keeping socialism at bay. Um, but they really don't. They, what they're doing is just turning the heat off a little bit. Um it, but the, the, there's Canada is a complete socialistic society, and the only reason why Canada hasn't gone the way of Venezuela is because we have the United States right below us here. They would not let us turn into Venezuela. Okay, now they've got their issues too. But I don't really want to get in the United States um, with their issues, but I think that I'm going to make some more videos on them too. Uh, I, I still think they are the last country on this earth, the bastion of freedom, but uh, definitely Canada's not. It's not a bastion of freedom. It's, it's just, it's a nation that is run on socialism, okay? The, you know, the lipstick on the pig kind of socialism. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, you can dress the pig up as much as you want. A pig is a pig, no matter how much makeup you put on. Uh, I... I believe, I've heard estimates in Canada, we pay at least 50% of the the fruits of our labors go to government. And I've heard even up to upwards of 60%. Once you factor in uh, sales tax, property tax, income tax, inheritance tax, you know, you know, go on and on and on about all the forms of tax, you know, local, regional, federal, you know, you're paying upwards of 60% of what you make. And, you know, like, yeah, like we haven't gone the way of Venezuela yet here in Canada, but we certainly, uh, only because the United States <coughs> is, uh, would never allow that to happen. But that's, that's the politics of Canada, people. It is six decades of socialistic policies, you know, government running everything, wanting to run the show. And I, you know, but they keep it, they keep it that lipstick pig kind of democratic socialism by not running. They don't, you know, they haven't come out and run the grocery stores yet, yet. We'll see how, you know, that goes with this recession that we're having here. Um, you know, they just nationalize things and that's, uh, you know, I don't like that Canada is such a federally run country. Okay, this is why I admire the United States, where the 50 states 
will really they they do they uh, they run in conjunction with the federal government but they do run independent again you'll get places like california and new york and they run completely opposite from places like south dakota and florida okay um like in canada you could have a province run by a conservative leader and they'll still they're still not running it any any different than a, a liberal as far as i'm they can tell and, you know, again, they, they do whatever the federal government says. So that's why, again, in the United States, you have different states to choose from. You know, if you want to live somewhere in California and pay heavy taxes and, and have your constitutional rights seem to be trampled, go live there. Um, you know, but if you don't want that, then go live somewhere else. And I, like, you have the freedom to move from one state to another if... It's completely different. <coughs> As we're in Canada, it's not really. You know, people are like, well, Western Canada is conservative and whatnot. But I don't see that. And I really haven't seen that in the, in, during the Cervasa sickness year since March 2020. Alberta came out with drastic, you know, uh, uh, Cervasa sickness mandates. And, and, you know, Quebec, who's supposed to be against the... The federal government, that you know, breakaway province, they they went above and beyond they had curfews and I don't know, people. This is it. This is Canada for you. If you like socialism, if you like the government running your major institutions, then you Canada's for you. Canada's a great place if that's what you like. And 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 I I, I just I don't think conservatives, whether it's provincially. And federally, they, they aren't much different than liberals. Okay, like I say, they turn the heat down a little bit. They might get rid of a few things the liberals brought in here and there. But they don't go above and beyond. They don't lower taxes. They don't help small, medium businesses. They don't help, uh, you know, conservatives are typically, should be for, for gun owners. They don't do anything really that's, you know, they don't really do anything for gun owners. And again, small and medium businesses, man, that's the backbone of a nation's economy. And they don't, they didn't obviously, they don't do anything for them. And Justin Trudeau, oh man, this guy <clears throat> obviously uh, wrecked the economy, um, just like every other country in the world, wrecked the economy by, by shutting down businesses, but, you know, allowing mega corporations like, like Walmart and Amazon, well, Amazon's online, so, but obviously their sales boosted up. But, uh, you know, mega grocery stores, um, you, you, again, your, your giant big box stores uh, like Walmart are allowed to operate. But there were some, you know, uh, giant companies here in Canada during the Cervasa sickness that, that wouldn't allow you to come in unless you had a, a you know, a face mask on. But so, so. So yeah, that's that's the politics of Canada. It's socialism. Everybody knows that. But it's really coming to light now that I mean conservatives like we got this new Pierre Polyev. And people are going, Oh, he's gonna be great for Canada. He'll beat Justin Trudeau. You know, he probably in a debate he would beat Justin Trudeau. I mean, Justin Trudeau, his credentials are part time drama teacher. And he admires Chinese communism and doesn't, he admits to not knowing much about economics. So I'm sure Pierre Polyev could beat him. But he's, Pierre Polyev is going to come in and what's he going to do for firearm owners? Because firearms have been under attack in Canada since June 2020. Well, they've been under attack for six decades, but, but really in the last uh, two years, Justin Trudeau has banned. Uh, so many different types of rifles and now handguns coming this October 2022 <coughs> will be banned and is Pierre Polyev maybe he maybe he turns out maybe he overturns those but he's not going to go above and beyond and say look I, I would I would spit coffee through my nose if he came out and said look I'm going to scrap the two system licensing you know, you know one license uh, and you know, it, it'll, <clears throat> you know, you get your license, you can buy any firearm. That'll be just, that's what you need. One license, make it simple. It's, uh, or, or may, is, 
I'd, I'd spit cough through my nose if he did that. I mean, I'd really fall over if he said, hey, I'm pushing for a, kind of a right to bear arms in Canada, which you know, I, we should have, but we don't. It's a privilege, not a not a right for to for good people to have the right to self-preservation. So, you know, um, but, but what will he change? Nothing. It'll be basically business as usual. Again, a conservatives uh, will will come in. They'll do a couple little tweaks here and there to the liberal policies, just to keep people, you know, the smoke create the smoke and mirrors of, you know, Canada's not socialism. But come on, people, wake up! Canada is socialism, and for sixty years it's been running rampant in this this nation. Um, so again, so conservative politics in Canada, yeah, it. They're not. They're not much different than the socialist liberals, and obviously the other third major party in Canada is the NDP, the New Democratic Party, um, which I thought had its its origins in you know blue collared workers, you know the farmers, the the truckers, and the hard working people, the hourly wage earner, earners. But now it's just I don't even know what that part of that that Jagmeet Singh is just completely decimated that party and <clears throat> he's uh, Justin Trudeau's lapdog so you know but that it's it's based in socialism and uh, I, I've never liked that party for that I, I do believe in the the individual working for themselves to better themselves and to provide for themselves and their family and friends if they want but you don't get that in Canada. You don't get that, especially when you, when half of what you earn is taken away. It's depressing, people. It's depressing when, you know, at the end of the day, you're like, geez, you know, uh, you know, you don't have any money. And people like Justin Trudeau, who were born with a silver spoon in their mouth, they have no idea what it's like to get your paycheck at the end of the week and go, okay, uh, you know, I got to pay the rent or my mortgage. I have to have money in there for the car if you have one, uh, you know, money for food. And, oh, if there's anything left over at the end of the day, maybe I can get myself a new shirt or something or, you know, buy a book or something. I'd like to have this bookshelf behind me filled with more books. But, uh, you know, I, I have the uh, the best essential books in there that I find, but I'd like to have more. <coughs> because, you know, books are a good investment as far as I'm concerned, but... You know, someone like Justin Trudeau is just, you know, who admires Chinese communism and admits to having no economic skills. I mean, he's definitely, that he'll just fall into the category of a socialist. And, uh, but then again, conservatives in Canada, like I, I, I go back to Brian Mulroney and Harper. And what did they do that was so conservative? Okay, I, again, I bring up GST. Um Small business, medium business, low taxes. None of these guys really do anything that's beneficial. In fact, yeah, the GST, that was definitely not beneficial. And uh, it's just another reason why I would like to leave Canada, okay, for the United States. And I I, I still feel the United States now is, uh, I know Americans will say, Trevor, it's just, it's not where you think it's at, but. You know, I'm observing from the outside, looking in, and and uh, there's a video I'd like to do, kind of a, like a, I don't know how to maybe call it my American pioneer spirit um, video, where I do believe America needs that injection of the pioneer spirit, and I feel that's really being lost in America, especially, you know, you look at your giant cities and whatnot down there, they... I don't think the uh, the hardworking individuals is, are is really there, but that's a different. Uh, I digress. That's a different series of videos. So again, this one's about Canadian politics, and it's business as usual. Uh, especially when conservatives get in power here, they're just you know put a lid on the socialism for a bit. But uh, Canada, I mean, everybody knows. Come on, I can't believe I have to even make a video like this explaining how Canada's a socialistic society and uh, it's very hard for people like 
like myself, who have, at the turn of the century, decided I want something different. Um, I want to be able to just, you know, mind my own business and, you know, do what I would like to do that, that could be productive for myself and friends and family and, and not have my, <laughs> the fruits of my labors taken away <coughs> in such a, a manner that, you know, half of what you get taken away. At, at what point do you, uh, do you just, do you say, look, uh, you feel like a slave. 50% of me is a slave. Because at the end of the day, too, all that money, half of your income getting taken away, you'd think you'd get some good health care here, some good education. It's it's not. It's government education and government health care. Like, do you think they want you to get better? No, they want to keep you as a patient. Do they think that uh, they want you to be uh, intelligent? No. I mean, uh, it's just, this is what it is, folks. Canada and it's uh, politics, uh, completely socialism. And you're fooling yourself if you think that conservatives in Canada are going to completely do a 180 on the socialism. They get rid of a couple things, but really they don't... Uh, they don't do anything. They don't do the things that conservatives promise, like lower taxes and help the small business owner, the farmers, the truckers. They don't do anything. They don't help any of these people. So my suggestion is get out of Canada. Um, and uh, I'm going to make a, a series of videos, well, at least one video I'd like to do with the American dream. I know some people have keep calling it the American nightmare, but I think the American dream can be brought back by pioneers, which I consider myself one, to go there and, and, and bring back that pioneer spirit, okay? And not be uh, just a person simply going to the United States to get free health care, you know, quote unquote free, or come to Canada to get the things that are free, I want to go to the United States to be a productive person and provide for my family and myself. And I think that's still there, more so than Canada. But in Canada, again, the people coming to Canada and the United States, uh, are, are they? there are some pioneer spirits, and, and they want to get out of their country. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't want to be one of these people that just wants to come to a country for things that are free. And unfortunately, that's what you get in a society that is run by socialism. So, you know, a lot of people want to be the, come to a country. They got to get out of their country. There's a lot of countries, you know, they're, they're getting hurt and whatnot. So, uh, well, come here. And, and there are a lot of people that want to work hard. But there's a lot of people, too, that think when they can come to Canada and the United States that it's completely, you know, streets are paved with gold and everything is free and it's not. And uh, that's not the pioneer spirit. And I, I do believe the pioneer spirit can be rekindled in a place like the United States. So, because uh, Canada definitely, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no turning around in Canada. It's completely socialism. And, uh, like I say, you know, I've said it many times, but again, please, conservatives are not turning this place around. Canada is, it's just, you know, you got to pull the veil back and, and get rid of the smoke from the mirrors and look and go conservatives in Canada. Just do nothing to, uh, to bring about any of the values that they claim to have, so... That's Canada for you, and uh, it's not a real place to come to if uh, you think you're coming here for freedoms and whatnot. You'll find out fast when your paycheck is, uh, you know, <laughs> quite a bit of money taken off your paycheck, and you go to buy things, you know, food, clothing, shelter, whatever, and you find there's more money taken away there, so... And that's, uh, you know, it, it's, it could get worse. It could get worse. 
It's definitely not going to get any better. <clears throat> it's not going to get any better with conservative uh, leadership in Canada. So just, just something to point out here, people. The politics of Canada is socialism for 60 years, and it's not going away. So, uh, yeah, stay free, my friends, and uh, have a good day. And we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.